Actually, good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending our live 2020 Virtual Graduate School Expo. Uh, this morning, we will be having our virtual presentation with Brenda and Rhea. Uh, they are from Alliant International University. Uh, again, if you've been with us uh, throughout this morning, my name is Jacqueline Aguayo, and I am the events coordinator for the Career Center, along with Roberta Salgado. She, also, she is our employer relations uh, lead for the Career Center. Good morning. Uh, we will both be your hosts for today's virtual event. And this live webinar uh, will be recorded and will be shared to your student email and also to the Career Center's YouTube channel. In a few minutes, I will be introducing our presenters for our 10 a.m. virtual session. Uh, first off, I wanna go over the functions available to you during the presentation. I do wanna say that your microphone will be, will be muted throughout the presentation. And in the bottom of the center of your screen, you will see a Q&A chat option. This is where you can ask questions and the questions um, can be answered throughout the presentation of Brenda and Rhea, or they can be answered at the end. It's really up to the presenter's um, per, uh, preference. Um, after the presentation, uh, like I said, either we can discuss the questions or we can discuss them as uh, you guys do your presentation. And now I will officially turn it over to Alliant, Alliant International University. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Hopefully you learned a lot about Alliant today. As she mentioned, I'm Rhea Johnson, and, and, and you're here also with Brenda Marquez. We are both Partnership Development Directors at Alliant, and uh, we're just pleased to be here. Just want to start off with sharing a, little, a few words about us. If you can go to our first slide, Brenda. Let's see here. Next slide. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So just to give you a history of uh, Alliant, we're a private institution. Um, we're fully accredited that prepares students for careers in psychology, law, business, forensics, and education. And we were established over 100 years ago. Uh, our oldest program dates back to 1909. We have six California campuses. The, we have three in Southern California, one in Central Valley in Fresno, and two up in Northern California, and a fully online campus as well. So um, I just wanted to share with you also, we, we have a video clip that we want to share with you. Is this the one? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. And then you'll just need to switch screens. This just gives you a, a little bit more of history about us. Okay, can you guys see this? Can you see this video, Rhea? Yes, I what? can. Okay, perfect. For the past 107 years, throughout all of the various campuses, name changes, and mergers, we remain rooted in a rich history and tradition with some of the best and brightest minds, combining academic rigor and professional practice to instill real-world knowledge and insight. We've continued to develop and prepare professionals so they can impact the world for the greater good the critical thinkers, curious explorers, the compassionate givers, those who embrace and respect others' perspectives, those willing to collaborate to find the answers to big issues, those who better themselves by bettering the world. Because it's here that we transform experience into expertise, expertise into leadership, leaders who make a meaningful impact in the global community. We're bringing together our knowledge, our strength, and our history. Working in collaboration, that makes us Alliant International University. Thank 
All right. She's going to switch yeah. it back over to our main. Uh, where is the thing? <laughs> Here we go. Voila. <laughs> we can go to our next screen. Our next screen. Here we go. <laughs> so I guess we want to just also start off with hearing with you about our, our mission, because that is really what drives us. Alliant International prepares students for professional careers in service, leadership, and promotes the discovery and application of knowledge to improve the lives of people in diverse cultures and communities around the world. And then we operate under uh, a series of four pillars. They are education for professional practice, scholarship, multicultural and international competence, and community engagement. And we'll just you know, step into each one of those over the next few screens. Next screen. So um, education and, and practice, we're a professional practice institution. So we're preparing students to become you know, to, to practice and that be it if they're going to be attorneys, if they're going to be psychologists, if they're going to be um, teachers, um, that, that is really the role. We're teaching them, we're, we're preparing them for, for professional practice to be licensed in something. That is, you know, the, the primary goal of the programs at Alliant. Next slide. And then we, we are really concerned with uh, the discovery of knowledge. It says scholarship, but it, 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 we're taking it from the, from the preface of building knowledge for our students. And then also having them uh, figuring out integrative ways to, to, for them to be, become knowledgeable. As far as our faculty, they're always searching and providing um, innovative teaching models for our students to learn. Next slide. And then we are we are an organization of service. So uh, for the most part, we're we're looking for our students to. Well, I'm on the. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong sli slide. We are a very inclusive in institution. So we're preparing our students to be able to practice and and work in in various environments. We have alumni all across the world that are they're learning. So um, the goal in, in, the, in the learning that they're receiving in our institution will pre prepare them to work in diverse, uh, in diverse areas. So next slide. Here we are, I was speaking on to, I was ahead of myself, but community engagement and, and service leadership is also something that is very important to us. If you're preparing people for licensure, um, it's important that we're making sure that they're going out in the community to be able to to build and learn. And so uh, part of our how we impact the world is important for our success that we're uh, that we're preparing them to to, to work directly and in, um, in, in the in the world. So next slide. We also wanted to have you just uh, hear a few words from our, our president, Andy Vaughn, and what we have to offer at Alliant. I don't know, Brenda, if you can make it full screen. My name is Andy Vaughn. I'm the president and CEO of the Alliance International University System. So Alliant International University has a really strong history that most colleges don't have. Our oldest school goes back 110 years this year. And we are really pleased to celebrate not just 110 years of existing, but 110 years of academic excellence. And a lot of colleges say that, but we prove it with our student learning outcomes and wildly successful alumni all across the world. Uh, when we look at our oldest school founded 110 years ago, many things have changed in curriculum, but not a lot has changed in our DNA and the way we were founded. For example, we pay a lot of attention to social justice. We're big on fighting for the underdog, true equal rights for all. 
And we don't just frame that as a hollow statement that gets on a piece of paper at the front door. We actually practice that. It's in our culture, has been for over 100 years. And multicultural excellence and inclusivity is a big part of who we are. To our core, we celebrate our differences all across the world, our students, staff, and faculty, and alumni. And that's really what attracts a lot of people to align. It's not just the excellent academic outcomes, but who we are as people. And that really sets us apart from many universities. The greatest tools and skills we offer our students are talked about by a lot of colleges across the country. And you hear the same things everywhere. Almost every college says our faculty are world renowned. They say things like we have small class sizes financially to those who qualify. Colleges say the same thing. Um, what makes Align different though in that respect is, is yeah, we do have small class sizes. We do have world-renowned faculty. We have all those things, but to me, that's like oxygen. That's what you need as the base, a foundation. It's like saying, this car comes with windshield wipers. Yeah, it should. That's, that's the kind of a baseline expectation. Your college should have accreditation and world-renowned faculty and programs that matter. What we do that's a little bit different is we get into the, the training part of the program that leads to a degree or licensure or both, and we provide Again, it sounds like a cliche, hands-on training, but our faculty, side-by-side uh, -side with the student, get into where they're really learning their craft, their trade, their skill, based on faculty that work side-by-side -side with the student at all times, and a staff that supports that. It's a very seamless process because it's not just attending class and lecture. We are a professional practice university, and what that means to you is that we go the extra mile of making sure you're not just learning something in theory, but you're actually practicing it with the faculty. So that by the time you walk across the commencement stage on day one, you are professional practice ready for a career where you actually make a difference on day one. Students should choose Alliant as the educational partner in their education goals because one, we provide a base of academic excellence supported by outstanding graduation, completion rates, and alumni success. And two, we truly care about individuals. And we attract staff, faculty, students, and alumni that want to get back to the communities they serve. So it's a two-part system. One, you want gainful employment in your chosen career field. We provide the training that leads you to either a degree or a licensure or both. And two, it's not just getting a career or a job, it's also getting back to your communities. And there's a lot of different ways our alumni do that, but it's a very well-rounded system at Alliant, and that's the kind of student we attract. The favorite part of my job is speaking at and attending commencements. We do commencements all across California each year, and it's listening to the stories of overcoming adversity that our students done, what they bring to the table, their backgrounds, their families are there, their friends are there. It's such a great day of celebration, and they're so happy to walk across that stage, but they didn't even know it's just the beginning. They're just starting a new career that we had of lace in, and it brings you to tears to hear some of their stories, the tragedies, the triumphs, uh, everything they've done and brought to the table to get their degree. At Alliant, our vision is an inclusive world empowered by Alliant alumni, and that's exactly what we do. It's not just training students to have a lasting impact in their career, but also a lasting impact in the communities they serve. Well, he said it better than I could have said it. <laughs> he always does such a great job. If you could advance to the next stage, the next slide. We are really a family of five schools, as you probably saw in the video. Um, we have our school, California School of Professional Psychology, California School of Education. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Diana Concannon, Associate Provost and oh, Dean of the I'm California sorry. School of Forensic <laughs> Studies. Oh, no, I am so grateful to all of you for taking the time to join us in this space. Apologize for that technical difficulty. <laughs> that was a little spooky. I was like, oh, is Diane, Diana here? <laughs> That's pretty 
but it's okay. I think we're all getting adjusted to this virtual. Um... <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> So we have our uh, California School of For Forensic Studies and then a California School of Management and Leadership. And then we have the San Francisco Law School. And uh, we'll just be going through each one of those programs briefly. Um, next slide. There we go. All right, so the California School of Professional Psychology is our largest uh, school. And it was founded just over 50, just over 50 years ago. And um, for the most part, it was founded actually by uh, two practicing uh, psychologists. And so their goal was to uh, make sure that they uh, had a school, a professional school that was preparing others for, for uh, practice. And so that's exactly what we do at, and we were actually one of the first independent schools of professional psychology. So we're very proud of that fact. As you can see, uh, we offer a lot of doctoral programs. So we offer them in various uh, uh, areas of psychology. We have for uh, clinical psychology, we have both a doctorate in, um, uh, we have a PsyD and a doctorate of uh, philosophy. So the PhD in the PsyD. Um, for marriage and family therapy, we offer an M MA, a Master's of Arts in um, marriage and family therapy. Most people just say MFT, that's probably easier to, to pa and more palatable. And then also a PsyD. And we offer a Master's of Arts in clinical counseling, which we affectionately call MAC. Um, and organizational psychology, quite a few programs there, our Master's and a PhD in, in PsyD. We even have a clinical uh, program, or the, the master's in psychopharmacology. Um, that's something that you would take. It's a postdoctoral program after you've finished a doctorate. And um, it's a long name, but really what that's all about is learning the, uh, about medications and how they work with the body. And so that's very important for those that are becoming psychologists so that they might not be a medical doctor. Uh, many of their patients may, uh, be a, may have medications and it's great to be able to understand and explain how those work with the body and the, the various therapies that they're providing. And uh, so with that, I am going to turn it over to Brenda and she's gonna share on our next school. Okay. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, me... Yes. I can, you sound great. <laughs> Here you go, all right. So California School of Education is a very exciting school because that's the one I represent. And I also am a former educator. I used to work for LAUSD as a high school teacher. That's how I started in this whole education field. Um, and I'm happy to present about uh, CSOE it offers a variety of degrees, certificates, and credentials in education that prepare students to make a lasting impact through teaching, counseling, leadership, advocacy, administration, management, and community work. Um, so in whatever pathway that you are at this particular time, whether you want to go into teaching, whether you want to go into administration, or school counseling, or psychology, we have those programs. Um, our programs are accredited and um, they all lead into some sort of licensure whether you want to be a teacher. We have our multiple subject teaching credential along with our single subject. We have our education specialist, so if you would like to be a special education teacher. However, we only offer the mild to moderate disabilities um, credential. There are multiple types of special education credentials. However, this is the only one that we offer. Uh, we also have our PPS in school psychology and counseling and administrative services credentials. Um, along with our graduate programs, we have our masters of arts in education in school counseling and in TESOL, teaching English to speakers of other languages and our Masters of Arts in Education in Psychology with the PPS credential as well. So uh, most of these, pro well, all of these programs are online. 
with the exception of our doctoral program in TESOL. We have our EDD in, in uh, teaching English to speakers of other languages, uh, and we have our PsyD in educational uh, psychology and ELM. Both of those are online. So let me clarify that our EDD in educational leadership and our PsyD is online but not our EDD in TESOL, okay? Uh, so that's it for me. <laughs> now I'll turn it back to Ria to tell us a little bit about our next school, which is our California School of Management and Leadership. All right, thank you, Brenda. So primarily our California School of Management and Leadership is preparing uh, our students for uh, careers in tech and quantitative, quantitative fields. Um, we, we offer uh, several programs at all levels from graduate up to doctoral level. As you can see, we offer an, an MBA, which most institutions that you, you know will also uh, have a data analytics program that you can get through relatively quickly. I believe that program is it's, it's less than two years long for you to, to be able to move through. Um, and as you can see, we're very heavy on analytics, especially healthcare is becoming a, a very important field. And you know, over the next uh, few decades, it's going to be very important that we, there, are, there are people uh, prepared to take on some of those uh, positions that will be available. And so we have our master's in healthcare analytics that, that is, uh, it's very popular. We have two doctorates in this area. We have our doctorate in business administration and the PhD in leadership. So really about um, preparing uh, our students to become leaders in their fields and management and leadership. Uh, in addition, we have several certificate programs and all of those are credit bearing which means that uh, once you complete them, you can um, tie them into a graduate level program uh, for credit. So um, that is what I wanted to share about that. And then I'll turn it back over to uh, Brenda who will share about our, our next school. So the next school that we offer here at Alliant University is our California School of Forensic Studies, uh, CFSS. Sometimes I get tongue tied with that. <laughs> is on the forefront of redefining and expanding the traditional definitions of forensic psychology studies and criminology. Uh, this is quite a popular uh, program amongst the youth since they all like to watch Criminal Minds. <laughs> so, you know, I always get asked forensic studies. Okay, so we have that as one of the first schools of criminology and forensic uh, psychology studies in the nation. So we are one of those schools. We strive to impact society, public opinion, and policy through evidence-based practices. Um, along with all our other schools, we are a um, professional practice school. So with this program, you will have that. Uh, our graduate programs include our MS in forensics, uh, forensic behavioral science, forensic administration and leadership, and a PhD in psychology, pu public policy and law. And what's great about this, for those of you who do not want to pursue a full degree, we offer certificates. Uh, and these are very um, informative certificates and they're great add-ons to other uh, degrees that you may have um, and those include conflict resolution P, uh, and peace studies, forensic victimology, fundamentals of correctional psychology with assessment, fundamentals of policy psychology, telemental health, forensic linguistics, fundamentals of correctional psychology, fundamentals of military and veteran psychology, and fundamentals of military and veteran psychology. So those are certificates, they're not degrees. Uh, so they're short and sweet and you can add them to, you know, a bachelor's, master's, wherever you're at in your um, educational career. And uh, now I will advance to our next slide here. 
back to Rhea. All right. And so that brings us to our uh, very last school, and that is the San Francisco School of Law, or, or San Francisco Law School, I should say. Um, and that is actually really the oldest. We, we mentioned that we got our starter, our oldest program is uh, 1909. Well, it's got to start at the San Francisco Law School. That is our oldest program. It was established in 1909. And it has provided uh, quality legal education to diverse populations for, for years. We are the oldest evening law school in the Western United States. And we are one of the first schools uh, in California to be accredited by the State Bar of California. And so we've had continual, um, continuous accreditation with them since 1937. And as we mentioned, we are a practitioner, uh, the majority of our faculty are practic working attorneys or practicing and, ju and judges. And some of them now are retired, of course. But uh, what that really speaks to is you really getting uh, real world experience in terms of the leadership or the, the, the training that you'll be receiving um, from our faculty. Um, and what else did I wanna share about that? We have two campuses where we offer, it says San Francisco Law School, but uh, we're offering them out of uh, uh, San Francisco Bay Campus, which is actually in Emeryville. Uh, we moved just on the other side of the bay. It's about maybe 15 minutes from, from San Francisco. And then the other is uh, offered in San Di at our San Diego campus. And we kept the San Francisco name because many of our students graduated and um, that name is very familiar. So although they're offered in kind of different places, <laughs> it is still uh, the San Francisco Law School. And um, there was a question in the chat about where we were located. And I just wanted to, re, um, to share those, those locations again. So we have six uh, California locations. We're located in uh, San Diego, Los, what, can you help me with those, Brent, Brenda? Yeah, I'll go ahead and type it in. So we have San Diego. Uh, we also have our LA campus is based in Alhambra. Um, a, bit, a bit north of uh, downtown LA. Uh, we also have our school in, in Fresno, Sacramento, and Irvine. Uh, and of course, our, our main campus in San Diego. And I'll, type it in, and I'll type it in the chat. Okay, and then the other two is, I support Northern California, so that's how she can rattle those off really quickly. And then I support Northern California, so I can rattle those off really quickly. We have a campus in Sacramento, and then we have our campus in uh, what we call San Francisco Bay, which is in Emeryville, 45 minutes from, from San Francisco. So, yeah. All right, so next, back over to you. So our accreditation. Of course, like our president says, uh, that should be a given, right? So we are accredited by WASC uh, and our programs, our clinical psychology is APA accredited, American Psychological Association. Our MFT is accredited by the Commission on Accreditation for Marriage and Family Therapy Education and our teacher credentialing programs are approved by the CTC, uh, California Commission on Teacher Credentialing, uh, and our business programs by the Council for Business Schools and Programs Active Candidate. So we're currently in that process and our school, of course, uh, part of the Committee of Bar Examiners and of Cal uh, State of California. So here are some of the highlights. Back to you, Ria. Or am I doing this? You're doing the highlights. <laughs> okay, highlights. <laughs> yeah, I get to do the highlights. Um, over 45,000 alumni working in schools, communities, clinics, medical centers, companies, courts, and prisons, and universities. So we, again, like we are practicing a professional school and our alumni, our faculty were all engaged in uh, community service and actual 
uh, practice. Um, so not just textbook savvy, but also we're out there in the community. Alliance students contribute more than 1 million hours per year in community service through internship, uh, field placements, and uh, service learning projects. Uh, so we're engaged in the community, again, worldwide, since we are international. We do have schools outside of the United States. Uh, Align faculty often with students um, uh, participate and have uh, produced and uh, produced over 1,800 publications, presentations, panels, and editorial boards. So, um, with that said, you know we are engaged in the community. We are practicing. We are out uh, making our degrees present in, in the workforce uh, as professionals in our careers and in the community. All right. And next slide, we are going to talk about our notable faculty. Um, so these are some of our no notable Faculty, if I pronounce these names <laughs> wrong, I am so sorry. <laughs> Abraham Marslow, most noted for hierarchy of human needs. Igor Ansoff, known as the father of strategic management. Paul Hersey, developer of situational leadership. Carl Rogers, one of the most influential American psychologists and founder of the humanistic approach to psychology, Victor Frankl, world, world famous neurologist and uh, psychiatrist, Marshall Goldsmith, named one of the most, one of the 50 most influential thought business leaders in the 21st century, and J. Douglas Haley, one of the founding figures in natural and family therapy. And the next slide will be our impact. So we're going to share a few videos uh, of some of our alumni uh, that have had impact in their fields. And one of them is Judy Shu, and she is Congresswoman. She has uh, completed a PhD here with the Lyon University. This may have an ad. Oh, it did it. Good. <laughs> to become a member of Congress. But in Congress, I've decided to take up the cause of mental health treatment and health treatment. So I fought to get on the Ways and Means Committee, which is considered the most powerful committee in the House of Representatives. And I asked to be appointed to the Health Subcommittee. And so I am involved right in the middle of all the issues pertaining to healthcare treatment in our country right now. And in addressing these issues, I actually draw upon my experiences back at Alliant University. The different internships that I was in, the counseling that I did, I was able to counsel rape victims, I was able to counsel students at a university, I was able to counsel blue collar workers at a county mental health center. And I use those examples constantly to shape my view and to talk about why we have to take certain actions that will be beneficial to Americans across this country. It was back in 1979 when I graduated from here, but I remember the fateful decision that I took to switch from my original major, which was math, to clinical psychology. And it was because I took an Asian American Studies class uh, and discovered 
uh, all the discriminatory laws that had been passed in, in decades prior um, and its effect on people psychologically, on their self-esteem and on their, their feeling of an empowerment. And that's when I decided that I just really had to change and do something that would help people. So I made the drastic decision to pursue my graduate degree in clinical psychology. It is so important for our mental health professionals to keep active and their voices will have a great deal of impact because they will have heard the most intimate feelings of their clients. They will have heard their clients' fear and anxiety as well as hopes and dreams. And their understanding of what is happening to people all across this country is very valuable input to those decision makers in Washington, D.C. and in Sacramento. So I am encouraging all our mental health professionals to raise their voices, to talk to our decision makers, to maybe be a decision maker, uh, whichever way you can give your input because it will definitely have an impact. This Congresswoman Judy. And now I will share with you guys a uh, impact video for our School of Education. One of our alumna who now teaches in LA and will share her impact. in Glasgow Park. I'm also the Arts Integration Director. Technical difficulties. <laughs> My name is Evelyn Serrano. I'm one of the art specialists at Los Feliz Charter School for the Arts in Glasgow Park. I'm also the Arts Integration Director. Here at the school I teach visual arts and um, really looking at a way in which teaching and, and learning in the arts can, can open up uh, potentialities and possibilities for young people. My impact as an Alliant alum and educator is one that I hope is informed by the importance of diversity and inclusivity in, in our classrooms. Uh, one that considers every child. Uh, very much in my mind is always a question of like, how can I, through teaching, create opportunities for everyone's voices to be considered uh, uh, equally and, and with the same power and with the same strength. In my experience with Alliance, I, I think it was very, very clear from the start that uh, there was a commitment to education being the great equalizer, that there, there should be a focus on, regardless of where the learning and the teaching is happening, regardless of the neighborhood, regardless of, uh, regardless of the socioeconomic makeup of the, the families uh, were connected to the school, the children, their race, their gender, their uh, learning abilities that everybody should be afforded the right and, and the, the right to access their education and their learning. And so I feel like I, I got tools through my learning at Alliant that, that are allowing me to become a better teacher and to reach out everyone in my classrooms. I think the teaching profession should be a goal. Um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't feel like a job. It shouldn't feel like something that you're doing from eight to four and you're done. It really um, should be a call because the impact of your work has so many ripple effects. 
not only is, is it rippling in the moment that you're in the young people's presence, but it also ripples and has an impact in their lives outside of school how they're connecting to their families, how are they connecting to all of their loved ones in their lives, how are they seeing the community that they live in and how they can affect that community and change that community. And so in a way, not only are you an agent of change in the classroom, but you're also an agent of change that extends to all of your children's communities, their families, their loved ones. So uh, in my mind, the teaching profession is if you're an activist, do this, you know, be a teacher. My name is Evelyn Serrano, and this is my impact. These children, they are my impact. Awesome. So that is Evelyn. Oh, where is it? What's great about our uh, teacher credential programs is that they were online before COVID, so <laughs> we didn't have to really do much. Uh, and we have over 600 student teaching placement sites throughout California. Um, so whether you want to go through our student teaching pathway or if you want to go ahead and pursue the in university intern program if you have a job offer or already thinking about working for a district uh, we're already set up so all our courses are online asynchronous so uh, if that's something that you're interested in pursuing uh, this is a really great program uh, i you i went through a program when back in the day and so online that's probably the way to go if that's something that you would prefer um, using that format. Now, next one, I'm gonna share uh, my impact uh, for our School of Clinical Psychology. Our School of Clinical Psychology um, in the state of California, more than 50% of clinical psychologists graduate uh, from our School of, of Professional Psychology, and we'll share one of our alumni impact videos here. Family Support Services came to be by our needing very much to have a place to train our students. The experience that the students get from this training program is to place a ton of focus on them as human beings. You know, dealing with the, after a family has lost a child or preparing for life-threatening surgery. That is a, an amazing experience for trainees to sort of hear those intimate stories as well as learn how to tolerate themselves and learn how to sort of be present to families that are really struggling. There was a parent here at the house and his three-year-old daughter had passed away. He told me a story about how he had lost his daughter earlier that day. And he told me the story about how he had to be a rock for everyone that day because everyone around him was crying. And in that moment, for that hour, he was just allowed to cry. And he said, thank you. I just needed to be able to talk about it. And he said, I don't think this is ever something I'm going to get over. And I said, I don't know if it's ever something that you do get over. I think it's something that you get through. I always wanted to give back. And I ended up uh, going for a tour at CSVP. And I decided to go for it, to be able to help people kind of on an individual level and in a community uh, kind of level as well. I started looking for what would be kind of the most challenging for me. And I found Ronald McDonald House and Family Support Services. And I thought to myself, what could be more difficult than working with 
families uh, taking care of critically ill children. Um, and I knew that would be challenging for me, and I knew that that could be a great way how I could kind of make an impact in the community. I saw working with the families that the support they got here at the house was unbelievable from the other families, and FSS could help facilitate that. But once they went home, they didn't have that same support. And so what I wanted to create was the first therapeutic platform developed by psychologists that would be genuinely therapeutic uh, when people use it. And so we built the platform and uh, we're now uh, creating a partnership with the Southern California Houses so that all the families can use this uh, specialized platform to stay connected, find support, connect with other families that have uh, rare conditions and diseases and illnesses, and then yeah, find the resources that are available to them. My message for FSS will be, you're my second family. You know, little words can change your mind, can change your life. All I want to say is thank you so much because on those moments when I fell alone, you were there. So thank you, FSS. That's our impact. Helping these families get through these problems. That it's not something that they get over, it's not something that ever be forgotten, but it's something that they can get through with strength and resilience. I'm Riley Saraju, and this is my impact. I'm Dr. Pat Morrison, and this is my impact. I am Dr. Susan Riguez, and this is my impact. These families, they are my impact. Now we can wipe our tears <laughs> and move on to the next slide. <laughs> so, oh, wait. It wasn't until I, I was here that, that, I, that I really knew that I, I was in the right place. Okay. So. Well, this ends our presentation and um, this is for more information should you decide that you'd like to reach out to us and inquire a little bit more about our different programs you could contact myself or Rhea. Um, I uh, predominantly work with the School of Education um, however you can still reach out to me for whatever questions you may have and Rhea can you share with us what schools you you work with Sure, so I, I primarily support uh, the campuses in, San, in Sacramento and Emory in um, San Francisco Bay, and they are concentrated on, and I'm sorry, in Fresno, um, for the most part, our California School of Professional Psychology and our San Francisco Law School are the primary programs that are offered there. So, um, but we can help you with any of those. We do, we, we would also uh, be taking your information so that we can invite you so, to some great webinars that we're going to be hosting that are more program specific. Uh, we have a workshop that's coming up actually this month uh, on organizational psychology. And additionally, we, we can tie you to some other opportunities to delve deeper into our programs with our admissions team so that uh, you can learn a little bit more and our financial aid department as well. Wonderful. So we did have a few questions in the chat and I would love to address some of them out loud since we do have some, some a few minutes. And also if there are any additional questions, uh, be happy to answer them. And one of them is, is there a set tuition to get a master's degree in Alliant, uh, at Alliant? And it depends on the particular program and also uh, if it's a campus-based program or if it's an online program. The tuition may vary uh, depending on what degree you're pursuing. So that's something that, um, you definitely would want to consult with one of our 
admissions counselors or go on our website to discover the, the tuition uh, that's depending on the program that of interest. Better yet, I mean, if you, if you have those questions and it's a specific program that you're interested in, if you'll leave your, your, your information, we'll make sure that we get you to the right academic counselor, someone who uh, can really address all of those uh, questions that you may have. You know, not just about, you know, the cost of the program, but, you know, how are you going to finance the program? So um, that's what we're here for. We're going to uh, be able to um, get you to the right person to be able to get those additional questions answered. And so um, I, I would prefer if you could, if you would share your information or um, if you'd like to have additional information that we, we get someone to, to respond. Yep, thank you, Ria. Absolutely. Um, the next question was, where is Alliant International University located? And our main campus is in San Diego and that particular campus houses uh, all of our programs. However, our school in Irvine houses our MFT program, our marriage and family therapy program. Uh, our school in Los Angeles has most of our CSPP programs. Um, and our school in Fresno also has um, CSPP, yeah. right, Ria? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's a school of psychology. Looking, yeah, psychology, clinical psychology. Um, clinical uh, counseling and organizational psychology. Our school in Sacramento also has our um, MFT program and then our school in uh, Sacramento and uh, our school in uh, Emeryville. That's our law school. Clinical psychology and law. Mm -hmm. So each campus is a little bit different should you go um, to pursue a uh, campus-based program. And we have our online campus, which houses uh, another group of, of programs that are 100% online. Uh, oh, and as far as our international, there was a question. We have a medical school in Mexico City and our Vitell School of Business and Hospitality that is a partnership with, uh, with our school that's based out of France. Uh, and we have, uh, I forget what our Tokyo school is, but I think that's kind of not going to happen anymore. But those two are the ones that are outside of, outside of the United States. Um, and another question for the certificate programs, uh, two questions on it. How long does it take to complete uh, and so they're going to vary a little bit too because depending on i mean they're usually eight week sessions for for the program but depending on what you choose it could be longer or shorter you know what i mean in terms of the certificate so it may be three courses that that complete a certificate or there may be two you know so it really will depend and then also there's varying cost on those as well Correct, and there's certificates with our School of Forensics. We have certificates in school in our School of Education, et cetera. So it just depends on, again, contact us and we'll be happy to, to share that information on, on, on your specific um, interest of study. Yeah, and we'll get you tied, clo tied closely to a, a content specialist that can go you know, really deep into all of those things. Okay, so do all campuses offer all schools of study? So we've shared that information. Uh, what are some schools that you have outside of US? We've shared that information. And does the university provide additional finance assistance to attend the schools outside of the US? And that I do not know. Do you know, Ria? No, and, I, and the gentleman that are, uh, the person that asked, I said, if you could send me your information, I'll make sure that I get someone to answer that question to you for you today. Okay. And we have our representatives uh, and our um, directors of partnership development that deal specifically with our out of the United States campuses. And we'd be happy to forward your information 
to them so that they can answer those questions more in detail. And uh, any other questions? Let's see here. I think that's all we have. If there are any other questions, <laughs> Jackie or anyone else that you guys may come up with something we missed or? <laughs> um, I think by um, the questions that were already in the Q&A, uh, those were the ones, but they were all really good questions. I also, um, I wanted to add that I really enjoyed the video from um, the teacher from LA, I forgot her name, so I do apologize for that. Well, it's but, not <laughs> yes, um, how she did mention that um, about the working in your career, if um, your career shouldn't feel like an eight to four, right. um, basically a job, something that that it's going to be kind of like, oh, I have to go to work or you're not going to feel enthusiastic to go to work. Um, that's the reason why um, you you go for grad school. You know, that's why students start exploring now as they're working under undergrad degree and then start seeing, OK, what field of of what field of career really do do I really want to concentrate for basically for the rest of my life or quite some years because as years change, people change too. And then there's uh, different, there's so many different careers that one might not even imagine, oh, I never even thought about a career in that field. Yes, and to pick, I'm oh, sorry. I was just gonna say that we've, <laughs> we've offered um, some webinars um, actually that speak to that. We just had last month a careers in clinical counseling mm -hmm. um, webinar where we invited about eight of our alumni to come and share about their specific journey, um, the work that they're doing and um, the impact that they're making um, in the world. And we have another one of those coming up, I believe next month on careers in marriage and family therapy. So we're, you know, consistently trying to get get people to have a full understanding and as i think it really speaks well to those that are um, in undergrad that are trying to figure out you know the difference between going into a career in clinical counseling to going into a career in marriage and family therapy what's the difference in terms of behavioral health and how 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 will you impact the world differently if on depending on the choice that you make so um that's the other thing and we we had some of our students at for that went into the master's in clinical counseling um some of them um journeyed on to a, a doctoral d degree and so i think it's good to be able to have those conversations with people who have lived through that experience um so that they can really get those those questions answered so we'll be doing a quite a few of those Perfect. That's wonderful. And I did notice one of the questions in the Q&A portion that, um, well, you already addressed it, that you have uh, different schools and outside of the U.S. And I saw one question there, if there's additional uh, financial assistance for going to school um, in one of those, those institutions out there of the U.S. Yeah, that question I wasn't certain of. I'll, I'll have to if someone can send me the the information i can i can make sure i get that back okay. that's a that's a detailed <laughs> question for our, for our business school of and uh, uh of hospital and hospitality we do um okay. the project the the we have a partnership so if you enroll into one of those programs you are able to apply for financial aid and we have our uh, scholarships available as well um but as far as our School of Medicine, I, I don't know. And that is uh, taught in Spanish. So oh, wow. <laughs> if you know Spanish, then you can go there. <laughs> yeah. And I also, there was a, a, a question around our next um, uh, information sessions. And I, I put the link to our events page Perfect. on the website that lists all of our information sessions which you can register directly online. I'm hosting one tonight for a teacher credential programs at 530. So if you wanna email me, I can send you the link to the registration or just go ahead and go on our website and register directly on there. Um, Ria, do you have any upcoming information sessions? Um, we're just doing the 
the uh, we're doing an event that's based on organizational uh, organizational psychology, and we're having one of our um, esteemed alumni, Dr. Uh, Stacy Starka, and she's going to be speaking on uh, organizational principles. The title or the topic of the webinar is um, transforming organizations from um, to from what is to what if. And it really speaks to what's going on in the world right now in terms of organizations trying to navigate through the pandemic and doing things in a different way. Just as we're having this here, we're doing things in a different way. And so that's, it's, that workshop will speak to that on the 20th. And so if any of you are interested in just learning more about principles and organizational psychology and hearing, hearing about from a dynamic speaker, um, that would be a one to attend as well. Perfect. So who, anybody who's interested, uh, please go ahead and see the link that was shared um, on the chat. And thank you again, Brenda and Rhea, for this great information. Um, I definitely learned a lot about Alliant International University, and I may potentially look into those uh, programs outside of the US because I want to travel. Obviously not right now because with everything that's going on, but hopefully in the near future. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. And then to all of our participants, uh, before you leave the session, uh, there should be a QR code on your screen. Uh, this QR code will be for a survey that uh, you can provide for us for this event um, overall or just for this session. Um, and then once you complete the survey, you will be entered to a drawing to win exclusive Career Center swag items. Uh, next at 11 a.m., Roberta Salgado will host our next session with Kent Graduate Studies. And I mean, if you're unable. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, if you are unable to see the QR code, I also put the link, the uh, the survey link into the chat. So if you get a chance, click on that link and you can take that survey right away. Okay. And I did want to catch myself. It's actually Kick Graduate Institute, Institute, not Kick Graduate Studies Institute. So stay tuned if you're still joining us or um, we'll go, go ahead and welcome everybody in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, and then in the meantime, we'll just go ahead and post the agenda and then, um, oh, yeah, there's a QR code. So whoever's still in here, uh, go ahead and scan it. Uh, we will be also following up um, with the, with the link for the survey if you don't get, if you're, you don't have a QR code or you don't get a, an, an opportunity to scan it. 